at no point in time do we refer to the donor as the dad no. or the father. No. You What's up, lesbian fam? So you guys heard the stories of all the lady boys and how they felt when, you know, when their wives, their significant others were pregnant with their soon-to-be kids. Kids. Um, so now the boys are three and a half, yeah, three and a half years old. And now we're going through the question of why they don't have a dad and they ask us about our dads so let's talk to Leslie what's going on y'all so like Beth said lately the boys have been asking us that question <sighs> what do you do you know at the end of the day we're still rookie parents it's our first time dealing with something like this and so we're kind of going on the fly about it. So recently, um, I was at my parents' house and I refer my dad as Pa. Like, hey Pa this, hey Pa that. And they asked me, that's your Pa? I'm like, yeah, that's my Pa. That's your dad? That's your dad? I'm like, yeah, that's my dad. And they just look at me and like, look at him, like kind of confused, but we have to tell him like, hey, but you know what? You have two moms. I only have one mom. And that's so cool. You're so lucky you have two moms. You have a mom and a mommy. And they love you so much. And you know, there's some kids that have just one mom or have just one dad and no mom. And you know, we have to explain to them that. And they're like, yeah, okay. They understand that, okay, there's different families, but they still ask like, I don't have a dad? It's okay. And then they'll say, it's okay. I don't have a dad, it's okay. You don't think about dad? It's okay, it's okay. So I remember when the boys asked me the first time, it was it was in like that repetitive stage where they were just asking me every freaking five minutes, like, do I have a dad? Do I have a dad? You know, this, that, and the other. And I didn't know what to say. And I caught myself getting a little bit overwhelmed and kind of irritated about constantly explaining it to them. And then I kind of, I had to check myself a bit and realize that this is new for me this is new for them they're just questioning what they see and um the boys aren't in school just yet but we take them to the gym and in the gym i've noticed that they're when the parents come pick up the kids it's usually like a dad or a mom but most of the time it's a dad because um, they're you know they're lifting weights and then they go pick up their kid all you, when I, I remember one time I went in at the same time as dad went in and the little kids came out running like dad, dad, dad. And the, and the boys looked at me and they're like, mom, mom, mom. And then when, as I'm putting on their shoe, they were like, this is, that's her dad, that's her dad. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and, I'm, and I had to explain to them again, you know, some kids have a dad, some have a mom, some have a grandma, some, I had to explain to them the different, you know, family scenarios and. It just comes along with the territory. Um, it's not hard for me anymore, you know, but they are coming to the realization that they have two moms and that their their situation is a bit different than most. Um, but I think they're, they're taking to it really well, you know, now they're just like, well, we have two moms, you know, but, you know, like Betsy was saying with her dad, it's the same scenario with my dad when I go to, um, my parents house and you know they adore their grampy their grampy is probably the biggest male figure in their lives and they adore him and when i call him dad they're like mom that's your dad that's not your dad that's not your dad i'm like yeah you know it's my dad and they're like that's your grampy <laughs> but um 
you know, it's just it's just a learning curve. I'm sure when they turn in the next three, four years, I'm sure it's gonna be a different scenario when they're in middle school, when they're in high school, and or you know whatever when they introduce their first girlfriend to us and they're like yeah we have two moms you know everything's going to be a learning experience and we're learning on the go with them it definitely takes a lot of patience um at first it did throw me for a loop because i i honestly i didn't know how to feel about that i hadn't thought i hadn't had the time to think about that you know but now i'm just like you know i'm sitting there i'm explaining to them i'm like it's okay guys you know you're a little different you have two moms but it's not a big deal so the boys started asking about them not having a dad when they turned two you know during the summertime we're always outside and the neighbor across the street you know he always comes out and plays with them and he calls out for his dad and so that's when it first started we didn't know how to react towards that except for telling them yeah that's his dad we didn't want to hide that there are male figures that are dads and um we didn't want them to be hi puppies when they're older they're gonna be dads you know and like i told les there's no such thing as a structured family there's different there's different types of family mom and dad two moms two dads a grandpa and grandma that are raising kids aunts and uncles that are raising their siblings kids you know there's foster care there's the list goes on having two moms it's okay there's no structured family and as long as a household has love respect that's what matters Papa, te quiero preguntar algo. ¿Cuántas mamis tienes? Una, dos, tres. Mom, mom, uno, mami, dos. Tino es tres. No, él es tu hermano. Sí. Yeah, dude. Waka waka. ¿Cuántas mamis tienes? ¿Quién es tu mamá? Este. ¿Y quién es tu mami? Este. Tú quieres a mom? Sí. ¿Cuánto? Tres. <laughs> mucho, mucho, mucho. Sí. Okay. ¿Y tú quieres a mami? Sí, mucho. Mucho. Sí. Qué bueno, porque yo te quiero mucho también. So like Beth said, um, they're extremely smart. I mean, sometimes I think that. Sometimes I feel like just because they're the age that they are, that they, they won't get it. They won't understand. That's a lie. They soak up everything. They never forget anything. And uh, they know what we're talking about, you know, even when we don't want them to know. Um, so this whole situation has been an interesting learning experience for us. But like Betsy said, you know, we can't, we can't hide this. This is something we can't hide. This is, it's, it's natural. You know what I mean? It's natural to have two moms, natural to have two dads, you know, it's just a little different, you know, but it doesn't make it, I don't want them to be fearful because if we show fear as parents and explaining this to them, that's going to project into our children. And, um, I'm very, I'm a very confident individual. And I feel like that needs to be projected amongst our kids. And this subject is more than ever is where I have to be extremely confident because they are going to run away with my confidence and my explanation and project it amongst other people, other kids and keep that going where we, you know, we want them to be comfortable. We want them to walk into a situation, into a conversation, but like, I got two moms, bro, what's up? You know, we just want them to be extremely comfortable and confident and approach the situation that way. I don't want them to shy away from anything. I don't want them to feel, you know, indifferent in any way. It's very important for Bessie and I um, to approach this with major confidence and, you know, have that radiate through our children. A few moments later. And we're back. <sighs> Parenthood's hard. But you know what, like, at the end of the day, we are first-time parents. You know, <clears throat> the 
other up uh, the other families on the lesbian moms they're all gonna go through this you know they might learn from what we're doing um they might learn what not to do or what to do that i don't think there's a right approach for this you know it's just something that um, we have to embrace and if we do decide in the future to have more kids which for me it's a hard no right now um but betsy is very adamant about wanting to have a bigger family <clears throat> i just you look at where we live this state is ridiculously expensive it is you know and to think about you know everything we've done to provide for these kids thus far i couldn't fathom you know having another child but you know that's neither here nor there that's future talk and um we will one thing is for sure that if we do decide to have an, another children excuse me another child or children because this is fertile myrtle over here <laughs> we will have the manuscript on what to do going forward with our kids and although every child is different yeah i mean look at the, these two like we have to discipline them differently and they're twins I was adamant about having an open donor because like I've told her she wanted a closed donor originally but I didn't want to make that decision for our future child you know and I felt as if it would be unfair for him or her well in our case for them but at the moment you know it's not my decision to make so I wanted to have that option available for them and then I finally convinced her that to, for us to look for a donor that was open. People referring the donor as a dad. And um, I remember when Magali and Vivi were first going through the option, Magali would come up to, would contact me and tell me like, hey, you know, um, where she would, ref she herself would refer the donor as a dad. And the first thing I told her, I was like, if you want Vivi to become more comfortable with this, you need to refer the donor as the donor and not the dad because he is not the dad. And it took her a while to, to realize that what she was saying was affecting Vivi and her and um, the comfort level for for Vivi. Make sure, you know, it's important that she reiterates that this is not the father. You know what I mean? Because that, sometimes I feel like the, the more lady boys in the relationships aren't being thought of as much as the the caring mother you know like we have we're going through our own stuff we're dealing with our own emotions our own problems and you know things like that you know using the right pronouns or whatever are extremely important in this process innocently ignorant people in our family would constantly be like well el papa, know, el papa. El papa the dad you know this there and the other and we had to correct them and we didn't get offended you know this this is another thing it's a learning experience it comes with the territory mm -hmm. our confidence radiates amongst our answers you know and we were hella adamant mm -hmm. we were like absolutely not you know this is just the person that provided us with a family you know it's nothing more nothing less um but like Beth said um she was extremely adamant about this about having an open donor and it just you know I, I didn't really care whether it was closed or open at the beginning it wasn't something that I ever thought about I never thought that came along with the process of having a child you know until we went through it and that was a question that we faced and she was extremely adamant about it and at the end of the day to be quite frank with everybody I have no I have zero worries that our boys would want to contact this person. But at no point, I just put myself in their shoes. You know, I, there's a lot of things that my parents did that they forced me to do as a child. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't nothing bad or anything like that. But I'm, I mean, in, in, in the terms of like religion or, you know, just certain other things. But, I would want to choose certain things in my own life as I grew up to be older, 18. I want to make some choices, you know? And me and Bets both are extremely liberal about that. We want the boys to, 
to make their own choices. There's certain things that we've done already for the boys um, to, to guarantee that they can make those choices as they grow up. In the mornings, I give them two options so they can feel like they're making their own decisions. Do you want cereal or do you want oatmeal? Do you want eggs or do you want me to make you some pancakes? And they'll tell me, okay, but I only give them two options and they'll tell me what they want and I'll make it for them or I'll pour it for them. Can I get some of these options now? <laughs> Hell no! Fuck. I'll make you your coffee and you can have your bread and butter. I mean, I'm the one with less options in this house. <laughs> I make you your protein pancakes. But, um... But you see what I mean? Like, I give them their options so they can make the decision for themselves. Yeah, so it, it worked out for us, you know? Again, like I said earlier, there's no right or wrong way to do mm -hmm. this. No. It's the way you feel as a parent. What you feel is right for your child. You know, and these are certain things that Betsy and I both were just... Let's, if they want, if they're curious, like, let me see if I look like this cat. Let me see if he talks like me, whatever. Go ahead, you know, seek that. But please believe that these 18 years, me and your mother have done everything for you guys. And I have zero doubt in my mind that they would ever be like, mm -hmm. well, that's gonna be my thought now or whatever. You know, it's just, I don't wanna take these options away from our, from our boys, like, you know? They're gonna, they're babies now. To me, they're my babies. They're always gonna be our babies. They're gonna they're grow 30. up to they're be, babies. yeah, they're gonna be grow up to be young men that wanna make their own decisions in life. And I can't take that away from them. You know, we're here to raise them to be great little humans, but at 18, they're gonna start making their own choices. And whether we like it or not, you know, we're not gonna have a say at that point. Well, hopefully that helps you guys if anyone is going through a similar thing or I know the lady, the LBM crew is soon to be going through some of this stuff and, you know, they're going to look at this and be like, well, you know, mental note, you know, they're going to go their own route. You know, none of us go the same route. That's what makes all of our stories so interesting because we all parent different. We're all different people. We're all trying to do different things just because we are gay uh, lesbian families doesn't mean we have to live amongst those parameters you know whatever you decide to do to educate your child whether you're two dads and they're asking for a mom or asking where their mom is or if you're two moms and they're asking where their dad is whatever you guys decide to tell your child or children it's gonna be the right choice you know With that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and tell a friend to subscribe. I don't know why I sit with you when we do this. You always you just love my armpits. No, you just start talking so much, and I'm just like, do 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 do. Well, talk. <laughs> Ain't nobody keeping you mute over here. I can't forget. Like when I want to, and I don't want to be rude I to interrupt help you. Me. Help you. Help me. Yes. Yo no entiendo eso. Ayúdeme, ayúdeme. Ah, pues, démoslo.